We made it, folks. Welcome to Volume 4 of the Hansi Flick Tactics. Now, in Volume 4, we're going to focus on the sliders. We're going to put that final cherry on top so we could wrap it all together and get those final details that are missing from the gameplay. Like integrating Flick's high line of defense, which we did do in Volume 1, but we're further enhancing it with the sliders. Also, I noticed in the simulator sliders, the gameplay did lack intensity when compared to real life, and especially this version of Barsha that's full of intensity. The sliders will also help to create quicker buildups. And something very important I forgot to mention in the first three volumes, all three volumes work the best if you use simulator sliders or these custom-made FC Barcelona sliders. They're built to emphasize Barca's strengths and also their weaknesses, like getting caught using that high line. So we're about to kick it off with the settings. But before you do that, guys, take just one moment, drop a like, subscribe if you're not, and make sure you turn on notifications. I know everybody says this, but when I say it, it just means more. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to game settings. Now under match, I recommend you use at least six to seven minutes. I personally use seven minutes. For the match difficulty, these sliders are based on the simulator sliders. I just enhanced them. So the gameplay is gonna be pretty tough. I would recommend world class. I mean, I used to play on ultimate <laughs> and the gameplay sliders have become so difficult that I think world class is a good way to start. If it's too easy for you, then go for legendary. And if legendary doesn't do it for you, then go for ultimate now i would use competitor mode off and i would use player based difficulty off now if you're playing on ultimate and the game is still too easy for you then set the player based difficulty to on this will enhance the ai star players like mbappe yoikoresh elite level players will get a boost it'll make it more difficult if that's not enough for you then also put on competitor mode to on now under attributes i do recommend use this on default so you get the full potential effect when you set up the player's role and focus from volume one the coaching development from volume two and player development for volume three so this does affect all three of them so use it as default now for the cpu sliders you could either set this up as tactical or dynamic or custom i wouldn't recommend you use custom unless you make a custom for every single opponent that you face when it comes to tactical versus dynamic i recommend you put it on tactical because keeping it on tactical will make the cpu play more their style real madrid will play more like real madrid las palmas will play more like las palmas if you set it up as dynamic the ai will react based on learning on how you play them this could be kind of cool because teams will learn from previous matches so this is optional so i personally prefer my opponent to play to their style so i set it as tactical okay in order to activate the custom sliders notice my subtitles it's telling you where to go in this scenario you're under game settings and then under the the subcategory simulation settings there you're going to find gameplay type you want to change this to custom so the sprint speed was increased to 36 this was to emulate Barca's quicker recovery runs in defense on transitions and in attack though i'm all about realism i did feel that the simulator sliders felt a bit slow compared to the eye test when i see them play in real life especially given the fact that i used a pretty zoomed in camera for my gameplay so i should be able to feel that intensity the acceleration was also increased, the intense pressing and high tempo movement. Now, although the speed and acceleration was improved, we did keep it realistic. We just wanted to add that intensity. And I do feel the change of pace does make the game a little bit more fun because the simulators were just a little bit too sluggish for me. So the shot error was decreased for the user and CPU. I decreased them slightly from the simulator sliders. The main reason, it was way too difficult to score easy goals. The goalkeepers are just way too OP. And don't worry about the difference between 50 and 55 because the simulator actually had a difference of a plus four. I just gave Barca a plus one to reflect the amount of goals Barca have racked up during the current season. Now for the pass error, both were decreased for the user and the CPU, but when we compare it to the simulator, the gap actually used to be a plus four. In this case, it's only a difference of two. So it's not like we're making the game easier. We're just making it more realistic to get the team to play more like Barca. Plus the decrease of a plus four to a plus two balance out other areas where we do have an advantage. Like I said, it's not about making it easier. So the shot speed has also been increased from the simulator. I mainly did this because from world class and above, it was affecting a lot of the mid-range players and it really felt like only the elite level players were unaffected. So I increased this for more realism. The pass speed. 
This was also increased for both, but I did give Barca a plus one to match Barcelona's quick passing game and to reflect the quick ball circulation central in the build and play. Now for the injury frequency, I did lower it for both because it was just out of hand, but I did keep the user sliders higher because Barca do tend to have way more injuries in real life than anybody else. So we did stay true to that. The injury severity was also reduced for both because not only did injuries happen too way too often, like in the first half of the season, I had like seven injuries and all of them were like three months long to the very least. So I had to reduce this by five. For the goalkeeper ability, I kept these the same as the simulator sliders. Even though FC25's goalkeepers are way more OP than FC24's goalkeepers. But because we did increase other areas like shot strength and accuracy, I felt it was a good balance to keep it as is. Now for the positioning on man marking, this was also increased for both to also balance out the improvement in speed in shot power and passing. Like I said, this is all about realism. It's not about making the game play easier. So we did beef up the man mark. I did, however, give Barcelona a minus one compared to the CPU. So certain opponents can take advantage and reflect the few times that we do get caught on our high line. Now, position run frequency. This was a big one, guys. Do have to admit, although I did enjoy the simulator sliders, the number one thing that I disliked about them was the player runs. They were way too low. And underhandsy flick players have way more freedom to make runs and have multiple players on attack, creating all kinds of overloads. But to keep it fair, I increased it for both. The positioning on line height. The simulator sliders were default at 55. I did increase the user to 60 to reflect Barcelona's high line of defense. How they like to squeeze the opponent into their own half. Positioning line length. This one was decreased to 25 for both the user and CPU to encourage shorter passes and quicker buildup. When it comes to the positioning on the line width, I kept them exactly the same as the simulator sliders. I think they got them right on point. Positioning full by positioning. So I did increase these for both user and CPU because I felt whether they were fullbacks, wingbacks, they were just not involved in the game unless it was defensively. The power bar, I left it exactly as it is, just like the simulator sliders. I know in FC24, we were using it way higher. I think it was 65 to 70. But in this version, in FC25, it is way more difficult to score, especially if you're using these or the simulator sliders. I went from playing on ultimate to world class. So 50 is gonna do just fine. First touch control error. These were decreased for both the user and the CPU compared to the simulator sliders, but I did give Barca a plus two advantage to emphasize the precision and fluidity in ball control during high paced exchanges. So that's it folks, we made it to the end. Make sure you combine these with volume one, two, and three. They're all meant to complement each other as a whole. So I have timestamped this moment that includes all the setup I did in the intro and the sliders. So you can come back, not have to listen to everything again. So when you come back, drop that like and if you didn't comment comment if you did leave another one i want to give a special thanks to the moderators and the memberships a lot of love a lot of hours go into these videos please show your appreciation you could do it by dropping a like dropping a comment sharing with your friends or you can go the extra mile and become a member memberships you can find that out in the video description so it's all complete now folks on the lower left you'll have volume one on the lower right you will have volume two on the upper right you have volume three and maybe in the future there's going to be a surprise volume five which you will find in the upper left hand corner until then, I will see you guys soon. You guys take care and have a good one.